They're coming to get you, Barbara. The Dare, a horror podcast. Brought to you by Big Baby Studios. Hello and welcome to this episode of Dead Air, a horror podcast. My name is Chris Costello and for all intents and purposes, I am the uh, horror fanatic of this podcast and I'm joined by my two other hosts. Please introduce yes. yourselves. I am one of the co-hosts. My name is Aaron Cristobal and I am a fan of horror movies because of the way it makes me feel. I'm only learning about the details of film from my two other co-hosts because I'm just here to watch and enjoy. They're the ones dissecting everything and giving meaning to me. But however, we have one more co-host who actually yep. hates horror films. I want to correct that uh, opinion of me now. I, <laughs> I'm Miguel. I'm the third co-host. Originally, they got me here because I'm the scaredy cat and I'm the guy who refuses to watch horror. But as we've been doing this podcast for a bit of a while now, Oh, I'm not a horror. I can do it sometimes. <laughs> except, except that one time we had to watch that stupid, scary movie. Right, say, out. Say, say the name. Say the title. Con- the Conjuring. I'll never watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so scary. <laughs> but, uh, but everything else I've watched and enjoyed. Just for the yes, reference. Absolutely. Beautiful. Cool, cool, cool. Well, today we've got a freaking awesome episode because uh, one of my favorite people in the universe is, oh. is on is on the show um <laughs> he is actually one of the very first people i've ever i ever 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 contacted as a to to get as a guest for for the the podcast and i'm so happy that we're fine we finally have him on he's uh he's a very very well known in a lot of different circles he's a comic creator he's a storyteller he's Currently, fi- he he is now he is he's just releasing the sequel to his hit uh, graphic novel, the mythology class. Uh, it's called uh, Children of Bahatala. So, guys, uh, please welcome Mr. Arnold Are. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Hey, Miguel. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Thank you for uh, having me. It's, it's kind of cool that you know, when Chris was introducing you, he said my favorite person because that's exactly what I would have said <laughs> if I had to introduce you. So, Arnold. <laughs> That's cool. Well, Aaron, Tayo, we're not that close yet, so I can't <laughs> say that. But yeah, by the end of the night, Aaron, you're gonna say that. That Arnold, sige, sige. he's my favorite. He's person. my favorite person hey, ever. I sige, let's to the podcast, though. So yeah. 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 he's already our favorite person again. <laughs> Love yeah. that. Yeah, great to be here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting. Yeah. So thank you so much for having oh, for, yeah. for coming yeah. on. Um, uh, this is a an awesome time. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of like uh, go break the rules for a second, and I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna date us because I think it's an important date to talk about. That uh, you know, um, well, it's great that Arnold's here, but another reason is uh, Joe Biden just won the presidency. Yeah. So I, so it's a what pretty unreleased. pretty awesome <laughs> pretty awesome day. Yeah. Uh, Maga. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maga. <laughs> <laughs> horror, horror podcast. <laughs> I, I just wanted to, to get that on the podcast because uh, it, it's pretty, pretty it's historic. Cool. It's pretty it's historic. Yeah. So, historic. So yeah. even if this uh, this does kind of date the episode, and this episode is going to come out probably a month after we this happens, so I just want to make that clear mm-hmm. that that's what happened today. So it's an awesome Mada. day. Mm-hmm. Okay, Maga. so so jumping straight into our episode and ignoring Aaron's c- cries Maga. for Maga. Um, <laughs> uh, Aaron, 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 take off your cap. <laughs> Red does Aaron, not suit you. Aaron, that's not the kind of podcast we are. Huh? Ooh, Maga. <laughs> All right. Antagonist talaga si Aaron. Okay. Okay. Cool. okay. Yeah. Okay, so great. Uh, again, Thank you so much for coming on, uh, Arnold. We're so excited because for a number of things, a lot of uh, a lot of it has to do with with your choice actually of movies. So mm, we'd love to talk mm-hmm. about that because we know how personally well I know how personal it is to you. Um, but but we'd like to tell everyone about it. So but before we jump to that, uh, one of the first things we we love to ask our guests is, uh, what is your horror origin story? Mm. Well, this is this is the. I, I, would, I chose Alien because this is officially my first ever horror movie. And uh, oh. I, yeah, um, I mean, back in this, when I was a kid in the 70s, you know, me and my older brother, we would, we would watch those uh, Peter Cushing and, and Christopher Lee Dracula movies. Dracula. They, were, they were being shown on TV and 
and uh, some, sometimes they would sh show it in, in prime time, and then but most of the time they were they were being shown in the afternoon, and we we just you know we were laughing. Yeah, I, I don't know if we could call that horror. I wasn't I wasn't scared of those those films, mm. and and so Alien was really my first ever experience uh, watching a horror movie. I, I never even knew about the concept of horror movie until Alien. And um, mm -hmm. I'm going to make this quick. Uh, so um, you don't you don't have to. We, we <laughs> enjoy hearing. Well, make it everything. slow. But this is how, how it started. Uh, so the year was 1979, and I think I was like seven or eight. And uh, it was just two years coming out of Star Wars. And uh, I, just saw, I just saw Star Trek The Motion Picture. And mm -hmm. uh, there's another movie, um, a Disney movie, uh, The Black Hole. And the previous mm -hmm. year, it was Battlestar Galactica. So <laughs> you know where I'm coming from. So anything, yeah. anything that had to do with outer space and mm -hmm. spaceships and, and robots and monsters, I just had to watch. And so one day, my brother um, showed me, he opened the newspaper and there was this poster of, for a movie. It was showing, it was called Alien. And I just I just saw the title. I, I just had to I just had to watch it. And I, I, yeah, and and I didn't even care about about the the, the tagline, the the, the the phrase um, in space, no one in can space, hear you scream. And no one can hear fact, you scream. Yeah, I mean the word scream didn't bother me. All I want, all I yeah. focused was the word space, and I was <laughs> I was sold. <laughs> and so, and I, I don't think we had did we have uh, movie ratings back then? It just said I remember it just said for adults only. I, I'm not sure. I think mm. we only had for adults Where only and in general patronage. So in 1979. Yeah, 1979. Yeah, yeah. Rating system. Yeah, they, they only had the, those were yeah, for adults, and I had to convince my dad. I I I said I convinced my dad that I wanted to watch this movie. And uh, he agreed. And I remember this clearly. He drove us to um, to Green Hills Theater, 1979. Oh. It was it was uh, last full show. It was a, I think it was a school night, but I, I, I didn't <laughs> care. <laughs> so uh, so we went there, and uh, I, I, my, my dad paid for the tickets. And then he talked to the security guard. Uh, I don't know if he bribed him or <laughs> he said something. <laughs> but but uh, but he, uh, my dad. Turned, turned to us and, and looked at us and said, "Let's go in." And I was, I was oh, very yeah. happy. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't, I don't know what he, what he did. Uh, so we went, we went inside the theater and um, uh, we sat uh, in the middle of the theater. And then the house lights went down. And then the 20th Century Fox logo came up, and I was really excited. This is like Star Wars. I was saying, this is going to be like Star Wars, man. <laughs> it's not like Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, and then the movie starts, and the Jerry Goldsmith. Uh, soundtrack came in, and it's it's the it's a, the the soundtrack for the score for for the opening credits as the, mm -hmm. the 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 title was being spelled out alien, and there was something strange. It, it it wasn't it wasn't there was no melody. It wasn't even it wasn't lyrical. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, but it had these creepy haunting sound effects, and yeah. I felt something strange. This is not well. You know, I'm still <laughs> gonna watch this. You know? <laughs> so okay, so so. Five minutes in, uh, the the planets were, were it was cool. The, the spaceships that was nice. Fifteen minutes in, they they, they land on the planet. Creepy. Uh, they find the derelict ship. They enter the ship. Uh, they enter the the egg chamber. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the eggs opening. It was really spooky. And John Hurt leaning over and looking down at the at, at the egg. And then boom, face hugger jumps out. Face hugger. And that was that was my very first experience at a jump scare. I have never, I, I have did. never seen, I have never experienced jumping, and it was a terrible, it was a terrible experience, and and and, and so, so I was, I was at the edge of my seat, and so, and of course, you know, later on, the scene with the the classic scene with the wow, with the chest yes, person, that, that was just, that was just horrible, that was terrifying, and I remember I, w I was sitting there and, and telling myself, you know, <laughs> this isn't Star Wars, this isn't Star Wars, <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and, but, but the thing, the thing was, I, I, I was, my eyes were glued to the screen, I couldn't take my eyes yeah. off. I was scared, yeah. but I wanted to watch everything. And uh, this is the one thing I'm, I, I wanted to talk to you guys later, later on after yeah. after this. Um, is that I think I think one of the one of the things that I loved about the film, and basically since it's my first horror movie, is that you know you know that each movie there's a specific emotion attached to it, and, it's, and yeah. certainly in, in in horror movies. And for for Alien, I think uh, there was, aside from fear and panic, of course, there's always there's also this this feeling of of deep despair. I was mm. thinking about this last night. That was this. I was trying to remember my my, my feelings when I was watching the movie for the first time, and 
there was a feeling of deep despair, of almost hopelessness. I think all, and I think this is this is the the ingredient in all uh, you know successful horror movies, is that that feeling of hopelessness, not just for the characters, but also for you know, for us, for for the viewing audience, that mm-hmm. we feel we're we're trapped, we're all trapped. We're all sharing this ex- experience trapped inside the, this horrible, you know, <laughs> nightmare mm-hmm. that we need to wake yeah. up from and, and escape. Because I remember uh, while watching the movie, um, I really, really wish that, you know, if, if, if they only had a lightsaber, you know, <laughs> if, if they only had, you know, phaser rifles or, or even if Obi-Wan was there, even Dar- I won't mind Darth Vader being there. And that, these are the things that was running across mm-hmm. my head while I was watching this. And, and, and yet, I can't because this is the re- I'm, I'm living in this reality uh, inside the Nostromo, and and yeah, that feeling of, of hopelessness is there. And yeah. so that's 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 the thing that that was my um, uh, I guess that so fire <laughs> because it, because I really loved after the movie I couldn't you know I couldn't sleep and the following day my I think my parents had to write a, a letter you know come <laughs> come, up, school. come up with a <laughs> come up with a lame excuse oh, our, our son can't go to school and it probably gave a really lame excuse or something like that but. But I really, really love the movie. Even if I, I was so scared, I didn't want to watch it again. But I, I love the movie, and then, so I had all these conflicting emotions with the film. And this yeah. is why, this is why it's you know for me, for me personally, it, you know, after so many viewings, after so many, you know, I'm studying the the scenes and how Ridley Scott, uh, you know, um, mm-hmm. thought of the the, the the shots and the lighting, all that. Uh, it, it still holds true to me because it's kind of like you're you're I'm, I'm being I'm, I'm saying. Uh, I'm connecting with my with the, with the creature, with the alien that that used to sure. scare me, and now I understand the alien. I understand mm. the creature. <laughs> so, that's so that's awesome. pretty much so. <laughs> Did not expect that. But yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it's one of the movies I keep on. Aside from Blade Runner, you know, every month I think I, I may have like if I need the sh- like I am working on a comic book. I would. Hmm, I remember that that shot in, in Alien. I want to watch it again. Maybe I could get a inspiration from, from that. And so yeah, that's, that's one of the movies that. That, that I always I always watch aside from yeah one of my favorite Ridley Scott films of course Blade Runner for me is still number one but this is yeah. very close second very close second that's awesome yeah. that's super cool I, I, it's also super cool that not only was it your first horror film it was also your first Ridley Scott film so yeah, you know how yeah, big yeah. of a fan you are of Ridley <laughs> Scott yeah but there's something that's about really cool. uh, there's something about how he, how he directs like before this uh, there was Jewelist but I haven't seen that I, I should watch that that was mm-hmm. his first Ridley Scott film that, but uh, there's something about him whether he's, he's working on something something historical or, or sci-fi he has this way of like he has this, this slant uh, he, he gives Mm-hmm. Every project he has that 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 touch. I think mm-hmm. when 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 Alien came out, um, I, in one of the interviews I was watching, he said he was um, he was actually depressed when he saw Star Wars because the mm-hmm. idea that Star Wars presented in the screen, the, the art direction, which was the, what they called the, the used future, where everything's yeah, like what... like rusty and then broken yeah, down, not, and, not shiny and yeah, brand new. The, Ridley Scott had mm. the same idea, and he was just so. De- I, I I was watching an interview. No, no, he was, no, no, he was, he was yeah. so depressed, and so he used that with with Alien, kind of like uh, he always mm. calls them the truckers in space, yeah. and I think it applies really. It well, really is. They are truckers good, in yeah. space. They are, yeah, yeah. Um, just for context for our viewers, maybe we'll we'll start off with a quick uh, summary on, on on what the movie's about. Mm. Thank you. Oh. Miguel, <laughs> okay, that's, summary that's usually, giver. Oh, that falls on me. So yeah. I guess this is set in the future mm-hmm. and uh, a ship containing Ripley mm-hmm. who is played by Sigourney Weaver yeah. and the crew are uh, woken up. It's like I, I guess in the future you travel in space yeah. you're put mm-hmm. to sleep like in a, in a sleeping chamber. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then so they wake up and then they realize that they were awakened ahead of schedule because they had to respond to this sort of uh, an SOS. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, an SOS. So they kind of was it an asteroid or a planet? It's a planet. Yeah, planet. It's a planet. They landed on it. Uh, one of the away team members gets attacked mm-hmm. by uh, a thing. Yeah, John Hurt. <laughs> yeah, a, a face hugger, no? So I, yeah. I think the what they call it. And then so they bring him back to the ship. And so I'm going to spoil the movie now, no? Mm-hmm. So anyway, yes. so they, so so they, so he had the, uh, John Hurt uh, inadvertently brings back with him uh, an yeah. alien, the alien, and. So they have to figure out ways to fight it, to escape it in the ship, in, in the confines of the ship. So it has this very claustroph- claustrophobic yes. feel. Yes. And then and then one by one, they get killed. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ripley's the last 
surviving mm-hmm. the, the last girl mm-hmm. and then she manages to do her skip yes yes that's yeah. pretty so much marami, so there's, there's, there's more meat to that there are more revelations about certain crew members but mm-hmm. it's pretty cool so, yeah yeah. very that's well done very well done that was Miguel. a great Thank summary for someone who saw it the first time so Arn yeah. Miguel and I just saw I've this for the alien. first time Arnold Give I've never that. seen any alien movie except Prometheus oh my <laughs> gosh I know I haven't seen any uh, Zero. Yeah, weird. Weird that this escaped my, you know, pop cultural radar. Like, oh, okay. I didn't grow up watching Alien. So, so I'm glad you picked it. So, I finally got to see Alien. Well, well I, I have a question because, uh, yeah. you know, Go. I, I think new viewers, I, I, I keep reading comments that it, it moves too slow. I, I, I really think that, but because when, when I was yeah. watching it as a kid, I didn't mind the slowness, the slow yeah. burn. I didn't mind all but that. Arne, but I think because also in this day and age, yeah. attention spans have just gotten shorter. That's yeah, why yeah, there's that's TikTok. True. That's why there's Instagram. Yeah. So maybe people do find it a little yeah. slow. But I did grow up naman with movies that, you know, <laughs> like a regular person. My attention span yeah. was normal <laughs> at the time. So I didn't find it slow. I didn't find it yeah. slow. I really it, it enjoyed was it. Her, her attention span was normal at the time. At the time. How is it <laughs> now? How is it now? It's all right. It's all right. I mean, it's I have an opinion um, about how people see old. Like, if you see an old movie now, like for younger people, I have an opinion about that or uh, a guess. I feel like they watch these old movies and can't figure out why it was so important to people like us, like who saw it when we were younger. And one, yeah, sure, there's the there's a bit of nostalgia and seeing it as a young kid where your mind is still fresh. Mm-hmm. But it's also because these movies kind of set the tone for movies now. Uh, you know, they kind of set the parameters that, or they set the tone the tone parameter and other stuff that movies... And then now, it's you know, it's more fast-paced. So all these kids, parang we, we're seeing this in our movies now. Eh. Parang why are we interested in the old movies? But it's because it's That's interesting true. and it's valuable because those old movies kind of set it up for now. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, even Blade Runner, parang when a young person sees it now, parang okay lang yan. Mm-hmm. But it's because... Uh, everything that Blade Runner did was so original. Yeah. And everything that came after Blade Runner could trace their lineage back to Blade Runner. So yeah. I'm, mm-hmm. that's what if, I'm thinking. If I, yeah. it's, the, the word yeah. Blade Runner has become like a, a movie term during yeah. meetings. Like if, if, if a direct art, art director tells the director, <laughs> yeah. I want that I want like, that Blade Runner look. And then, oh, shit. just like yeah. that, you know, they, they understand, yeah. they get it. The, the weather, the, the rain and all yeah. that, the yeah. grime. Yeah, all I that. haven't seen Blade Runner. Oh so. my God. Yeah, yeah. You should. Did you see twenty four? Did you see the latest one, twenty forty nine, Aaron? The one with Ryan Gosling? No, okay. no. All right, just wondering. Well, cool. um, wow. Well, well, something about uh, Miguel said. Um, well, the truth is, when I saw Star Wars again, and that was like around late nineties. Uh, oh, even yeah. though they, they, they were saying back in the seventies, it was it was it was energetic. It was fast paced. Actually, actually, when I saw it again, it was kind of slow. So maybe, yeah, I, it I, is. I guess, yeah, I, I get yeah. the. Um, a new yeah. hope, yeah, a new hope. Sorry, yeah, yeah, and and um, so I, I get where where the kids are coming from. If if you're Absolutely. so so yeah. used to to you fast editing, snap, and all all that, yeah, you're watching the, the old movies where everything is like slow burn, you know, it builds up. It does, yeah, yeah. I, I get, I get that. Yeah, I yeah. totally agree with you. Uh, I have had that experience on a number of rewatching a number of of uh, movies. Uh, from my past, no, and then just realizing, mm-hmm. wow, even my my how I view movies has changed. If I am finding all these movies I love growing up uh, to be kind of slow, um, it, it's really created some sort of weird shift in my you know in how I appreciate stuff uh, because of mm-hmm. how much content I've I have uh, consumed since then. <laughs> I actually think that in general, a lot of old movies set the bar on the movies today. Like, for example, when I was younger, I didn't think Exorcist was scary at all. Really? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I didn't find it scary. (laughs) It was creepy, but I wouldn't think about it at night. And then Mm. the one that would make me think about it at night was Ringu because that was different because that yeah. was something that I had never seen before but okay. Exorcist kasi, so many possession movies happened after that and Exorcist was the one that set it up so when I saw it it was like oh okay <laughs> yeah. you, you weren't scared yeah. of Linda Blair? Or? no yeah. Even with the I eyes also and... watched before I saw Exorcist I saw Linda Blair hosting this show um, <laughs> she was hosting a TV show and she's like hi I'm Linda Blair from The Exorcist and she looks so mabait so when I saw her again in the, ori- in the original Exorcist I was like oh I know her she's the host of the show she's so nice so, 
<laughs> She's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's it. It's just when people say that about old movies, it's just because they've seen things similar to that now. Mm. It's because they copied that. Yeah, that's true. It's, Interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's like also like how my dad got me into Hitch- Hitchcock. Um, mm. <clears throat> when I when I when when I started watching it, I was not the big fan. To be honest, mm. I, I was like really like really slow paced and everything. And now uh, now literally, he is my favorite director. Mm. Um, I, I got to appreciate way more, way more. Um, all of the as, techniques. As I grew up. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. It's because it's because you realize that all, a lot of the stuff originated there, yeah. and that's what makes yeah. it so special and so yeah. original. Mm. You know, mm. so so. Yeah, he, so he invented anyway. he invented a lot of a lot of cinema so many techniques. Things. Uh, techniques, so mm-hmm. many techniques. Uh, really incredible. Um, what do you call this? Oh, oh. Since, mm-hmm. uh, what I was gonna say is like, since we're all on the top of kind of like old movies and how they hold up, I, I want to talk about like how the technology was was displayed in Alien. Uh, I think mm-hmm. it still holds up. It's it's a good yeah. mix of of of. Um, there's still the old like seventies camp. With, like you go into a ship mm-hmm. and then like like there's so many. Flashing lights for the no lights. reason, <laughs> but it looks beautiful. But yeah. so many lights, random square buttons right. that light up, you know. But but still, yeah. like overall, the technology is was really like it's still it's yeah. still looks really good. Yeah, today. I, I like think, how, I think really, the design of the ship of the Nostromo itself is beautiful. It, it really has a lot to do with uh, with uh, Ridley Scott's vision. I mean, in in the script it says that when they received the SOS, it's actually in, in alien language. I mean, I can't even imagine that that would have turned out really mm. campy. But in the film, it was it was done very. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It was very elegantly it, yeah. done. It was just bites, you know, and 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 frequencies. That's yeah. all you see. And they never actually said it's an alien language. It, it's yeah. it's really well done. It's it's a uh, class of its own. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, I actually didn't. It didn't feel old to me. Right, seeing right? it for the first exactly. time, it didn't feel old to me. And you know, as someone who is not a film person, I was still able to appreciate. Now, wow, they were able to take a shot like this. Wait a minute, wow. this looks amazing. Wow. It looks, it looks new. It doesn't look seventy nine. It looks like uh, two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chris. Chris, remember I, I was I messaged you and I was um, before before the show. I, I was watching some of them. Uh, bonus features in the DVD of Alien, and yeah. and uh, I think the biggest the biggest plus that the movie had was the, the choice of of Giger, of getting Giger into oh, the film. Oh my god! Because, Can you imagine if the Alien was a different design? Yeah, the, actually, oh, Ron Cobb, scary. Ron Cobb, who designed the Nostromo, he, he was he's good at, and he just passed away, I think, a few months ago. And um, he, he's the designer of the Nostromo. He, I think that's his forte. He really designs good, uh, it, you know, spaceship designs. It's very unique. It's very, it, it's uh, everything's, because he works as an in- industrial designer. So it, everything works. Mm-hmm. It could actually work in real life. But when, when, when they asked him to draw, and, and the, in the DVD, there were, there were several illustrations of, of the alien, because they haven't gotten Geiger at that point. And yeah. it looked like 1960s, like the, the, the alien looked like, a, <laughs> like an insect, a giant insect with several... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and, and it didn't work. It was, it was only when they found um, Geiger's the, the bo- uh, book, Necronomicon, when they saw the, what, what would mm-hmm. later on be the alien with, with the lo- elongated yeah. head. That was it. That was it. Was it was like everything that if the alien just looked like that, like like the sixties right. campy insect insectoid, it would have had the movie would have like fallen apart. Mm. And no, and it, uh, it owes so much yeah. to, to Geiger. Yeah, and his design. His designs uh, are everything about the design. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, I'm I'm sure that you being um um an an, an artist, I'm I'm sure you've. You you can draw a lot of inspiration from both the design of the Nostromo yeah. and and anything that Geiger did. Yeah, I mean, in fact, when I when I got my first airbrush in college, I, I tried to recreate one of the wow. one of his paintings. I had failed at that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, <laughs> his, that guy up. his paintings are are. I mean, uh, to be honest, they're really disturbing. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. but they're. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a charm in there. There's a beauty in there. That's that's and and it, it's kind of it's, it's kind of like a guilty pleasure. You you're looking at mm-hmm. these horrible figures, sometimes yeah. even sexual, but but there, there there's beauty in it. So, yeah, 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 I think that that's the appeal of, of Geiger, and uh, he's one of the that, one of my favorite artists yeah. aside from Mobius and 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 uh, Sid Mead. Uh, I'm yeah, googling him now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and they're all gone. You Arnold, those are those are the yeah. guys who set the the aesthetic for sci-fi, talaga, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sid Mead for Blade Runner and Tron and Mobius, of course, yeah. major influence. Yeah. And uh, I think he designed for Alien. He designed the the spacesuits. 
the, the bulky mm-hmm. ones, the one for it, it's so yeah. Mobius. Yeah. And I didn't, when, when cool. I first saw the movie, I didn't even know who that guy is. But I love the designs. I love, I love how the, uh, the space. Beautiful. It didn't look like like the two thousand one uh, space Odyssey spacesuits. It was more. I think there, there was there's more. Um, I think he took a lot of liberties with the design. There was, yeah. there was really no like in two thousand one. You know that, that they were trying. They were talking to scientists and then engineers mm-hmm. and how to create the spaces and all that. But with, with Alien, it was just again about the, the the truckers in space. That was the whole truckers theme. in space. That I got. Yeah. That's so really they're all it. dirty and. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's so funny. Like I was, re- re- I rewatched it again because I love this movie so much. Mm. Rewatch it again, and I realized mm. the Nostromo is such a disgusting <laughs> spaceship. Like people are it's sitting around, water they're smoking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're smoking. <laughs> like there's a cat running away, uh, running around everywhere. It's dripping water. It's, everything looks so rusted. So, so the uh, but you know, like the uh, that aesthetic has been copied so many oh, times yeah. afterwards, oh, yeah. like yeah. everywhere. Serenity, Firefly. I mean, like so many of these things. It's just a you know a original take on on uh, on on spaceships. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, so that's why space truck uh, truckers in space. That's really it. <laughs> they really designed the Nostromo to be kind of like a disgusting yeah, it, spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> Complete opposite of of what Star Trek showed in the screen. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes, where everything's yes, sleek yes. and then high tech. This time it's like, yeah. and, and I think it adds to yeah because. When when one of the interviews with Ridley Scott was saying he was saying something like he wanted the actors to feel that claustrophobic you know, the, the, the mm-hmm. ship is like yeah oh. you know you're, you're stuck in this uh, catacomb and and then this is claustrophobic feeling everywhere and uh, I think there was one point where 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 some of the actors almost went crazy. <laughs> I can oh, imagine. Really? Oh. Yeah, because, because there were no windows. You had no idea what time it, it oh, was. Shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it was playing in their heads, which probably helped for how how they acted in the movie. Yeah, it did. I it did. know. Yeah. It must must have added to so much of the atmosphere. Mm. Um, the other we... girl looked like she was really going mad already. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, other was, girl, no, diba? she looked other... like she was. Oh, yeah. Like I, no, they, they, didn't they play like when they did the chest bursting mm-hmm. scene? Yeah, that. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Really, it was real. It's real. It's real. It's real. They, they didn't tell her that they, they were gonna use that much blood. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, they, they, they didn't tell them what was gonna happen. Yeah. They, they knew what they knew what there was gonna be a chest burster scene, but they had no idea how it was gonna be done, and it was they had no idea how it was gonna be so so filthy. Yeah. You know? Because they use yeah. real blood. Uh, I think they, they they ordered the blood from animal blood. blood. Yeah, animal blood it, from yeah. Slaughter House. You should house. watch that, watch that scene again. Yeah. The reactions are so real. <laughs> it's so like, real. Yeah. It's just like real, like shock. Oh my and, god! You know, it's it's <laughs> really good. Must be a bit of a maybe a dickish then of an Ridley Scott too pull that on them. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, if it gets a natural reaction, yeah, I, yeah. it's effective. It Go is. Ahead. It is. And um, of before we, 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 so so sorry to interrupt you because I'm gonna forget about this. Okay. Just before we we go off of the discussion of, of H.R. Geiger, I want mm-hmm. want to talk about uh, his uh, his second most famous creation. This is a joke, by the way. Mm. Oh, what he designed the mic a special microphone for the singer of Corn. Oh, yeah, I'm not even joking. Like, yes, uh, I saw that. You can Google that. You can Google that. You can Google that. Yeah, pretty, I have a book. No, on it. So, <laughs> I have an art book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's it's a pretty gnarly looking microphone. Anyway, yeah, it comes oh, yeah. out. Galia. Oh, it looks <laughs> great though. It looks, it looks great. Yeah, yeah, super, super, doesn't it? Yeah, super organic. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the yeah, shape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Like I was gonna say something about the visuals of uh, we were talking about how the ship looked and how, but I also want to talk about how they shot this. Parang a while ago, I mentioned how Alien and Blade Runner parang kind of set the aesthetic for sci-fi as we know it now. But I think there were some scenes in Alien that I felt were very. Uh, sorry, hold on. I'm gonna Google. <laughs> Google the <laughs> word you were gonna use. Yeah, no, no, it's, the it's, adjective. Yeah, no, 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 not the fucking film and the uh, director. <laughs> it was very Stanley Kubrick and 2001 Space Odyssey. Uh... I forgot. But anyway, like you know, like they were like in the beginning when it, mm-hmm. before all hell broke loose. I don't, when they were just shooting the empty ship and people living their lives in the ship, there were very mm-hmm. symmetrical shots and very art. And even when yeah. they, even even that room where they were talking to mother, mm-hmm. it was very yeah, with the lights there, yeah. yeah, it was very. It's getting them. I think that was the cleanest. Yeah, that was the. I think that was the cleanest shot. The cleanest yeah. part of the the ship. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, well, the, uh, the alien. Go ahead. Go ahead. Aaron. No, well, uh, 
because it's it's true. I mean, when, before before Blade Runner, the last futuristic film that came out was in 1976, and that was Logan's Run. I mean, you can just compare the two. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then okay. if, if you look at Logan's Run, even though it, it won a, an Academy Award for special visual effects, I mean, the the, the costumes look like. It came from a, a disco house. You know? right. Everything looks yeah. like disco, very disco. And compare not, that to, to, to Blade that's Runner. That's why this where... is like very, very timeless. It's, yeah. it's an evergreen movie, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one of the great things about... Uh, well, there's so many great things about this movie. It's, but mm. one of it is like... Uh, it spawned a number of sequels. The mythology of, of Alien um, has really grown. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of what I appreciate about the first movie is all the mystery. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of the sequels try to over-explain mm-hmm. things, mm-hmm. I feel. Um, but this, why, what I love so much about Alien um, is the fact that it is, it's, it's a mystery. It's really a mystery at the start. When they find the ship, they board it. It's a fucking massive alien with a seated on top, some sort of like mm-hmm. massive gun. Yeah. Right. And he's fossilized. And that yeah. alone just kind of throws you off. Mm-hmm. And then because they don't explain anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. so that, mm-hmm. the, the eggs are they're terrifying. The face huggers are terrifying. The chest are mm-hmm. But I mean, just the, the placement of these mythos at the beginning that they never explain mm-hmm. for me is just so... It's so great. It adds so much to the whole experience. Exactly, yeah. Um, and it really um, made it horror for me. That yes, part. Yes, that yeah, the fact exactly, that everything yes. was a mystery. Because when when Chris said that we had to see Alien, I was like, is that even a horror movie? Isn't that sci-fi? You know, like Mars Attacks <laughs> kind of thing. And they're like, no, 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 it's horror. It's a horror movie. <laughs> it is. So while I was watching it, yeah, because I was holding the pillow to my face. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. so, you know, thrilling. And then even... When the guy was approaching the egg, mm-hmm. you know how in horror mm-hmm. movies you're like, don't go in that room. I was like, don't yeah, go yeah. near that fucking thing. Are you crazy? <laughs> Bam. You it's know. moving. Yeah. What the it's fuck? Moving. Don't go close. It don't opened up in. and you're going to put your face near it. It opened. Are you an idiot? You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. I like that. I like that. I really didn't. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I mean, there's been a lot of talks and discussions comparing Alien with Aliens, uh, the James Cameron movie, but that, that, that Alien was pure horror. Aliens, mm. on the other hand, it, it's more action, action thriller. It's an action. Oh. And it's true. Yeah. It's true because, because mm. like, like you said, in, in Alien, no, nothing is explained. In fact, yeah. after Aliens, Aliens in 1986, that's when the term chest burster came out. That's when the term mm-hmm. face hugger came out. Face in oh, Alien, there was, yep. there was nothing. It, it was just this thing yeah. with, with, with Fingers <laughs> with, with yeah, yeah. limbs and, and 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 that and even even the name for for the alien was explained in alien the xenomorph. Yeah, there mm-hmm. was no yeah. term for that. It was just this creature that. So it, it's it's pure. And the movie Aliens yeah. is really pure horror. Uh, aliens is really more about. I'm not saying that I'm not taking anything no. away from. Alien. I still lo- yeah. I, I love that movie too. and uh, one of uh, my favorite James Cameron films. And, and but but yeah, it, it's more Aliens is more action an action yeah, thriller definitely. Yeah. There's a big uh, discussion on, you know, uh, which is better. Actually, on, on our Facebook group, that was one of the first polls we ever made was, what do you prefer, mm. Alien or Aliens? And it was it was mm. actually very, it was split down the middle, but then Aliens kind of caught up towards the Crap, end. Crap, I'll watch, I'll watch Aliens. Para, yeah, well, let's watch it, it Miguel. <laughs> let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> and, 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 and if it's an action film, I'm kind of into that. That's pretty cool. Same, it's but same. But definitely less of, a, less of a horror film than this one. Mm-hmm. I, have, I have a question about that, by the way. Sure. Like, when Alien came out, was, mm-hmm. was, it, was the automatic reaction by people who saw it then were like, oh, fuck, horror film to again? Or was that a later reading? Or like in hindsight? No, no, no it, was, it was a horror film. They knew it, yeah. I mean, the tagline alone was, in space, no one can uh, hear, can and, hear and you scream. Fa- and the fact that it was sold as Jaws, but in space. Yes. yes. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. that's how so, it was marketed? Yeah. No, that's how they pitched it to the how studio. They pitched yeah. It, yeah. 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 It's like uh, Jaws, but it's... And then, but Jaws was such a big blockbuster. Mm. Okay. Pirate Joss was the first summer blockbuster ever. And yeah, Pirate, yeah, it started uh, it Everybody's all. like, yeah, everybody's like, we have to find the next Joss, we have to find the next Joss. And then here comes Ridley Scott saying, I'm going to make a movie, it's like, I don't know, Joss in space. And like, yeah, they wrote a check for him. Yeah, yeah Because, because <laughs> Star Wars was so, such a big hit. And the next, yeah. like, the only space spaceship movie that the yeah. Century Fox had that was Alien. That was the next one in line and yeah. they green-lighted it. When you look at the whole landscape you know, of space and sci-fi, mm-hmm. um, 
Star Wars nga is a bit of the oddity. It's a, like it's an op- it's a space opera. <laughs> Everything else is kind of smaller scale. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, but sorry, to comment again on Alien, but while I was watching it, knowing that it was sort of framed like a, of a like as a horror film, you could see the horror tropes talaga eh. Mm, yeah, uh, the beats. Galing, in, in, in the beginning pa lang, oh my God, the ship is haunted. Yung parang like, <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it gave me that feeling and then parang, oh my God, it really is a monster hunting them down. One, it's like a slasher. Like, you know, may mga yeah. And then later on, when it becomes like, uh, when the alien comes out, now it's now it's now it's a monster flick, de ba? Yeah. And then parang ang galing pa nung mga oh my god, who is the monster? Is it the alien or capitalism? Like, or, is it, <laughs> or is it uh, Whalen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. The, the, the fucking you know, corporate people. Is it the yeah. suits? <laughs> yeah, with the oh, android. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And even even Sigourney Weaver in the end, parang very prototype, parang very typical uh, last girl talaga siya. Mm-hmm. And and they even sexualize her by. Getting her in, in her undies na lang at the end. Diba yung para, yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ganyan, I actually yeah. thought they were gonna make her fight in her underwear. And I was like, this is cool. This is cool. Um, tigas niya if she can fight this thing in yeah. her underwear. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Aaron, if you enjoyed that part, then you're gonna love Aliens. Okay. Let's watch it now. Let's watch because, it. Let's watch it. Because, because yeah. that's when Ripley j- really becomes an action hero. Yes. <laughs> yes. When, that's when she takes everything into her own hands and then she's like, ah, I'm just going to fucking kill you all. Love it. Mm. It's really cool. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, man, so many things I want to bring up. First of all, do you know what, what, what the original title of this movie was? Star Beast. Oh! Star Galing Beast. Galingia. <laughs> I would Galingia. not have watched that. I would not yeah. have watched that. Like, I think. I think uh, while they were discussing, they were, they were, you know, the 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 script was being tossed back and forth. It was being rewritten and, all, you know, and changing all the the characters' names and all that. The the word alien kept popping up, and and then eventually they said, you know, it could be a good title. It's a noun and an adjective, you know, alien. So it worked. Mm-hmm. And it's just one word. <laughs> But Star yeah. Beast, yeah, it, it was supposed to be called Star Star Beast. Bang yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have. It wouldn't have been horror either. No. Yeah, Star exactly. Beast. Imagine the poster. <laughs> so parang dapat he man. Parang dapat parang he man yung itsura. Yeah. Well, um, well, going back to to what uh, Miguel was saying about Jaws in space. In fact, an- another innovation that. For, for for the the, the monster movie that we just got mm. for Alien is that unlike all all the other monster movies that came before that uh, there was very little shots of the alien itself everything yeah, was like shot in the shark I mean, yeah. I mean yeah because because with, well with with Spielberg he did the same thing with the shark out of um, I guess out of necessity right. because the, yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 yeah it always broke down and the, the, the shark yeah. looked fake and all that but but for this one it was intentional they really wanted you know, putting all the smoke in there because uh, I guess he knew really Scott knew that the imagination is, is a lot more terrifying yeah. than what you see on the screen and exactly. that's it worked it worked it's super yeah. worked what was the cat's involvement in this whole thing? Like, what's your bad? <laughs> like, I was just happy like... they didn't kill him though. <laughs> I was, th- I was really like, oh my god, they're gonna kill the cat for sure, for sure they're gonna oh kill god. this cat. And but, at the okay. end, yeah. oh my but god, for me, <laughs> for me, it felt like the, the cat represented, I don't know, innocence, humanity. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah, nature. That that this is yeah. a, this is a thing that's out to get anyone. You know, it doesn't it doesn't yeah. care whether a human or. And uh, there, yeah, there are a lot of symbolism there. I think that that, that part where uh, Ripley was, you know, with, with the underwear, that, that was showing vulnerability. That you know, yeah, for God. sure. <laughs> this, yeah. This, yeah, this because is, like she thought that, uh, that everything she was done. safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah she, she thought yeah. she was safe. safe. Yeah. Mm-mm. Imagine if you had to fight off something in your underwear. <laughs> I know. Oh my and God. <laughs> mind you, uh, it was major uh, bacon underwear, pa. <laughs> You could see like her butt crack. Yeah. You know, they didn't yeah. glamorize it. Yeah. They didn't glamorize it. Yeah. It was yeah. just yeah. like, yeah, this is yeah. what true, a true, fighter true. wears. This kind yeah. of underwear. Yeah. yeah, I liked her a lot. Yeah. She is incredible. So that's another thing we should definitely talk about is how incredible Sigourney mm. is. So good. But the first one I want to say is like, because um, we already touched about it, no, is uh, that the final girl trope. Um, mm. a, a while back on the page, I was like, uh, calling for the final girl I was like saying mm. Nev Campbell is my favorite final, final girl because I Scream. never even considered 
Sigourney as a final girl because like mm. in, the, in its purest form, no, um, mm. final girl is basically someone who survives a slasher film. Yeah. But right. if you think about it, this is technically kind of <laughs> like that. Like, it is. Yeah. Like, she ends up defending herself against the villain, surviving <laughs> while everyone else dies. You know, yeah. so so now with that in mind, she's absolutely 110% yeah. the greatest final girl mm. then. Mm. For, for me, if we put it in those terms. Um, Tigas eh. She's, yeah. so she's, she's yeah. incredible. Like, she, has, she has broken, I it's think, really tough. the role of, of Ripley has broken so many barriers for for for, for women in, in film. Like, you know, being yeah. being taken seriously as a not just as an action star, but mm. like you know, as someone as an authority figure almost. Yeah. Um. Um. Like you, you, without without Ripley, you're never gonna get Trinity and and the Matrix. Yeah. Yeah. You're never gonna Chuck- get yeah. fuck, if fucking anyone. Seriously, uh, Charlize Theron in every, in any movie she's ever yeah. been in. You know what I mean? Yeah. The badass Rip- woman. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and also- I think there were themes also of how women were actually seen before because. From yes, the start, so. she was making all the correct calls and nobody was listening to her. Yeah. 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 That's yeah no so one annoying. To her now. Yeah. Look at Aaron so mad. Uh, <laughs> every yeah, call it. was correct. Every call. Yeah. Like even yung when she, she, I, I, she yung ayaw niya pabukas yung the doors because oh, she didn't quarantine. Yeah, because of quarantine, the quarantine, quarantine process. Yeah. yeah. How timely pala. My quarantine yeah. process dun sila. And parang that fucking uh, the other guy who I won't reveal us what he is. But yeah. he's like he like overrode everything. Yeah. yeah. And also also um I think there was there was a discussion too that mm. by by making Ripley the last the, the survivor in the film, no one would would, would like expect that. Yeah. Even the, the, everyone watching this is like nineteen seventy nine. Right. You know, mm-hmm. where we're you know, the, the macho hero is always the one who's left this time. It's like pulling the rug underneath everyone. Super. Yeah. No one would expect that it would be a, a female. Would survive know, she's the whole like thing, a female yeah. John McClane. Yeah. Except that she came before John McClane, you know what I mean? From Die Hard. So so by Lang. by that, it, it's still yeah, it's it's you know, an, an, another first, I think. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if there's any other movie that you know where, where, where the hero is a female back in the seventies. I'm not sure. Um, nah, sci fi and sci fi and action, yeah, and yeah, horror. Um, I, I don't think so. And horror. Yeah. 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 So again, yeah, that's that's the first. Thing. Did you know that the the, the the character Ripley was actually was originally written as a as a male? Oh, yeah, by Dan oh. O'Bannon. Who who decided uh, it should be female? It, it was Ridley Scott. Ah, it was Ridley it. Scott. Because yeah, that, that was the reason for that. That was that was the reason behind that. That no one would, would suspect that it would be Ripley who's going to survive, and, and you know the, the last survivor of Nostromo. Mm. So that, that was a good call. Yeah, it was a good call. I agree. And. All these great character actors pala were in this movie. Tom Skerritt was in it. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, great Ian, Ian Holm. The great Ian Holm. May and then, he rest in peace. Mm-hmm. And, and some of them were dead now. Like, uh, yeah, John the, Hurt. The, the, yeah. yeah, John Hurt. And then the Stanton guy, the. Yeah, I heard these technicians. Yeah. yeah. Um, wait, the, the, I've got some trivia for that. Who played Parker? Um, oh, yeah, Fit Koto. Yeah, Fit Koto. You know, he lives in the Philippines. <laughs> What? Well, uh, yeah, right I, 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 yes. I think I, I may have read something like that. Oh, I'm gonna walk, look for Google this. He yeah, also played a, a Bond villain. Yes, yeah. yeah. That's, that's how he that's how he, he, that's how he got into the movies, the Yeah, yeah. And then you know, he was ad libbing all his lines. He was trying to piss off Sigourney Weaver so that he could because I think when when they were shooting, Sigourney Weaver is like he's not she's not acting like a leader and all that. So I think yeah, I thought it was like <laughs> you know making fun of her. She was, you know, she was oh, deliberately, yeah. you know, saying, yeah, you know, saying, you know, ad libbing, just, oh. <laughs> just oh, to piss shit. her That's off. Really cool. Interesting. But yeah, but Koto was also in Midnight Run. Yeah, galing ito, galing ng career niya. Yeah, we retired in the Philippines. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> well, <now> well. <laughs> ain't nothing like Filipino women, I guess. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Look, I, I'm, I'm on his Wikipedia page. Koto married his third wife. Desi Sinahon. Ah, ito yung Pinay. Ah, okay. Malamang, okay. malamang. Yeah, there he's go, here. There he's here. He's here, guys. Yeah. yeah. He's here. He's here. <laughs> We're in the um, Philippines, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He's hiding. Yeah. He's hiding. Hiding from what? <laughs> <laughs> from, his, from his career? <laughs> wow. wow. Um, what okay. do you call this? Uh, so, so, like, 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 let's, let's lightly touch on, on the mm. sequels. 
Yeah. Because okay. what, what I what I like about about uh, the Alien uh, franchise is they always get an exciting filmmaker to do one movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of times uh, they're successful, uh, but not always. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this okay. one was Rid- Ridley Scott. Freaking incredible. Mm-hmm. Next one was James Cameron. Really great. Mm-hmm. Third one was David Fincher. David Fincher. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there are they all others. young? Were, were these all yes. the first? Okay, so… Not the first. Um, but under rice sila. Mm. So parang talent spotter talaga tong well, Was Alien 3 Alien. David Fincher's first film? Uh, yes. He was, so, yeah, he was, he was first. He was doing yeah. music videos back before. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. and then um, there's a uh, Alien Resurrection by uh, Jean-Pierre Jeunet. Yeah, very. I'm not not the biggest fan of that. No. Um, <laughs> Also for me, it doesn't count because Ripley's a clone in there. But but uh, spoiler. But mm. uh, and then there's of course the spin-offs, which kind of uh, dilute the franchise by, mm. by making Ali- Alien versus Predator, Predator. Predator. <laughs> Alien versus Predator, <laughs> AVP two or something. Fucking yeah. like. But but yeah, like like it's it's been an incredible franchise. Mm. I mean, it's lasted over how many decades? Three or four? Yeah. yeah. And now we have. I mean, um, so much merch was made. Arn has one right there beside uh-huh. him. <laughs> the neck of Boys. <laughs> and then yeah. there was, of course, uh, the the return to Ridley Scott in Prometheus, and uh, Alien, Alien Covenant. Covenant. And then uh, I think I think is, is, isn't there another one coming? Yeah. Arn? What is Covenant? Damn. I know. I have that's to see the, that's the, the exact sequel to Prometheus. Prometheus. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. It came out after Prometheus, pa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's oh, a sequel, sequel to Prometheus. I didn't see what? this. Right. It's really the origin of, of Alien. No, no, no. Not, not okay. the Alien, not the Xenomorph. It's really the origin of um, uh, the, the race that, that brought the mm. Alien to this. The engineers. The engineers, mm. yeah. 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 So Would you guys big, uh, know if big, they made the Alien the with the intention to make sequels? Or parang hindi? Well, spoiler, it's... Well, it turns out, mm. spoiler alert, uh, it turns out that David, mm. the android, had something to do with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I'm not gonna say much because Miguel hasn't seen it. Me neither. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna Google that shit now. <laughs> <laughs> or you can actually just watch the movies. Yeah, you know, yeah. Really, really good. Fine, fine. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, but I mean, I'm sure we're gonna get to watch uh, at least a few of these movies later mm-hmm. on for the for the podcast anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they got um, mixed uh, reviews though. Uh, Prometheus, both Prometheus yeah. and and uh, Covenant. They got mixed reviews. Yeah. What, what did you think of of, of I, Martin? I love them. Uh, well, ah. it's not objective. Ahead, it's just like, this yeah. is Ridley Scott. I mean, he still has it. For, mm-hmm. I mean, for me, I, you know, there, there are a lot yeah. of shots that that you know, it feels like Alien all, all over again. Uh, especially mm-hmm. the, and then the way the way he handles uh, like technology, the way he yeah. handles the uh, you know the fear factor. It's still the same. He still has it. Still has it. I mean, it's, um, I was telling everyone before the show that Prometheus is. More of a sequel to Alien than Aliens is. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, pre- okay. well, 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 well. It's a prequel, obviously. It's a prequel, but yeah. It, it, it's it's more ingrained in the mythos for sure. Mm. I mean, because it explains the engineers and uh, the that giant uh, fossilized uh, yeah. alien at the in the middle of the the ship. Mm. So it's all about him, mm. basically, mm. or them. Um, yeah. So I, I, I. Yeah, Miguel, I watch not. it. <laughs> Prometheus. Oh, hi, yeah. I'm yeah. I'm one of the non-haters of Prometheus. I'm I I don't love mm. it, but I really appreciate it because I love the franchise in general. Mm-hmm. Man, I I mean like I I I still even even though I trash Alien versus Predator, actually the first one isn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> even the, even the alien design in, in Covenant and in Prometheus. I mean, I mean Geiger is a tough act to beat. I mean, how yeah. somehow they they found a way to to like. Reference Geiger without really going, you know, without really going too too far. You know, it, it still looks like it would have been a design made by him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it true the med- not medio synergia that the a- alien kind of looks sexual? Yeah, looks like a penis. <laughs> oh. He looks like a penis <laughs> okay. when he gets up. Oh. I noticed that there was a lot of shots where you could see just the shadow and mukha talaga siyang. Yeah. That's all Geiger. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm sure all of that ties in. I mean, like there's so many like you know the subtext of of basically it's basically rape. You know, the face hugger mm-hmm. is basically a rape because it's mm-hmm. like you know it's it's a violation, and then there's an Down impregnation. The impregnation, yeah. Right. You know? yeah. Um. So so yeah, there's definitely so many sexual innuendos in this uh, whole thing. I mean, the whole again, like the whole franchise is about like 
you know, evolution and mm. birth and rebirth sure. and death mm. and, you know, that, that whole cycle. And uh, so I, I am not surprised that the alien is extremely phallic. Super. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sure. Maybe the chest burster, I mean. <laughs> the chest oh, burster. Ah, chest burster. Exactly. A lot of Freudian exactly, exactly. symbolisms. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's so funny watching that scene again and then be, knowing how, how movies work. Um, watching watching the chest burst there, it looks incredible. And then the next scene, there's like a close up of the of the little alien like whipping his head left to right, <laughs> and then you're like, oh, it's a fucking puppet. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then it skitters off the desk, and then it looks like a puppet. Yeah. But, you know, well, uh, now now it looks like a puppet. Yeah. Baby. Now it looks like yeah. a puppet. Back but watching the first time, it's like fucking scary. Yeah. Yeah. Get it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There were a lot of things that could have been campy, I think, if the director wasn't who he was. Because like, mm-hmm. yeah. I noticed there were a lot of things that parang oh, this this could be funny, but the way that they're displaying it actually gave me fear. Mm-hmm. That, that, yeah. that puppet, like the, you know, even the face hugger. But galeng, mm-hmm. galeng. I was, I was actually scared. <laughs> it was a fun watch. And I love that I watched it. I love that I saw it for the first time, actually. Yeah. It's, yeah. A yeah. Actually, it's a good how, feeling. It's a good feeling. We didn't get into that. How both you and you and Miguel, how, how was it watching it for the first time? So go go ahead, Aaron. Oh me, okay. I really enjoyed it because I didn't know what to expect. My expectation right. was Mars attacks, and then I got this. So <laughs> it was Why? so good. I don't know. Aliens yeah. for me are. I sorry, Aaron. I know you yeah. love aliens and spaceships. For me, because they're. It's not my number one. I, okay, I wouldn't yeah. okay. go out to see a spaceship or an alien. So <laughs> <Not> this person. <laughs> what me? Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It's not my Aww. thing. But yeah, I really enjoyed this movie and mm. um, seeing it. Seeing Sigourney Weaver in that role for the first time was pretty cool. Because yeah. I remember yeah, from yeah. Ghostbusters. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. so this was this was pretty cool. I really oh, yeah. incredible. Isn't it? Yeah, badass, inspiring. Is the word. Yeah, I love I love how in the beginning she's like, no guys, fucking don't come on board. You're gonna yeah. bring yeah. the infection to us. <laughs> no one listens yeah. to her. And then of course all the men don't believe her and yeah. then go against her. And they all get yeah. killed. <laughs> so yeah. so timely. It's so timely. See, no and one even listens just the to quality that of her voice. I love it. She's so yeah. clear with the way yeah. she talks. I loved her in this movie. Super. I'm telling you, you are going to love aliens. Oh yeah. You're gonna love it. No, no I definitely it. prefer. The first movie, but like that doesn't say anything bad about aliens because I love aliens. Mm. And if you love Ripley in Alien, I you're did. gonna love her in Aliens. Okay. Gee. How about How you, about Miguel? you, Miguel? Uh, I enjoyed it a lot, but uh, I understand why this was such a seminal movie for a lot of people and why a lot of people are big fans of Alien and Aliens, Alien or Aliens. And also, why there's always a big debate about. Now I want to watch the other ones because I want to know what people are so mad about or what people get worked <laughs> up about. But there are also bits na parang I could see it. I saw it as a film of its time. Then talaga. Yeah. Like uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if that means it fe- it felt dated. No, na man, because the themes were still current. But maybe the visuals were a bit throwback for me, which was mm. which I kind of, which you know doesn't bother me. I like naman a lot. Like parang I felt it referenced nga a bit of. Break, like visually, like I can't help but see it as a visual thing because I take pictures. But parang nga, parang, and it, while watching pala guys, I was taking out of screen caps. But parang naganda dito. Ah. Parang again, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I have, I have a folder of screen caps now. Yeah. Parang I enjoyed how it was shot, how they made it. And then there were times na parang, oh, ato na yung effects. Parang nakikita ko na yung, like parang, sure, the, the green yeah. screen. Or, or, or I like how Ridley made it more well so bagay, I guess they were limited at that time but yeah. made, a lot of it were practical like mm-hmm. you, like even my, one of my favorite sh- fuck I'll just talk about it one of my favorite <laughs> shots and scenes was you know, Ian Holm like his head oh yeah, like, yeah. You know, uh, and, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. you can and you can tell when they're switching cuts between the yes, puppet and yes, when it's their when it's their real head mm-hmm. stuck under a, a, a table so it could you know what I mean yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, pretty, that's pretty cool I enjoy I enjoy I enjoyed Ian Holm's character a lot which is why it kind of gave me an appreciation for the only other alien movie. So Prometheus. Mm-hmm. Like, oh shit. So this is why, fuck, fine. I'm saying it. So this is why these androids are ah. kind of, are kind of like, uh, like they're, they're, they link all the movies. Mm, yes. Or yeah. at least, and parang, and parang they're important. Parang, and they represent a lot of things, these androids. Parang, you know, as, 
as creations of their makers, but at the same time, they also want to be the, the creator. You know what I mean? And it becomes more complex and subtle for me. And even Ian Ho, even Ian Holm, the way he played that Android role was so good. Like, you know, like he was the only one, he was the only person before you find out acting out of sync with everybody. Yeah. Like <laughs> when, when everybody was afraid or petrified, he was curious, you know, when it, when yeah. People, yeah, <laughs> nice. yeah. And, um, yeah. and also, you know, after, after it's revealed that, that uh, the, the character of Ian Holm is, is an android. That's when yeah. it's like you, you 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 feel for the characters. You feel so lonely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there are only three of us left. Betrayed. And, you know, this, this android could have been, you know, I mean, if you think about it, if, if it was reprogrammed, <laughs> it could have helped them with the alien. No, he's actually working for the alien. And now, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. again, again, like, like what I said, you know, the, the feeling of hopelessness is it, so effective with this film. And, you know. or, or worse, pa, Arnold, but he's the agent of I don't want to sound like I mean he's the agent of capitalism like, you know what I mean? yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. he's the he's the corporation agent of yeah. the corporation the like, suits, who, does, yeah. who, who literally called everybody all the other humans expendable yeah. but right. just bring in this thing that we want to weaponize but, oh, mm. galing, galing. that's another great thing about the movie is compared to other, to the sequels no it's like it's so political. a lot of the sequels <laughs> no a lot of the sequels repeat all of the stuff that happened in Alien Okay. Like there are a lot of like Android reveals. Uh, there okay. are a lot of these like scumbag corporate um, suits. Like the suits. Suits, yeah. The yeah. Suits, yeah. Um in, in all the fucking movies, seriously. Um yeah, and, and a lot of that starts here. That's why I really prefer the first one mm. over every, everything else. Yeah. 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 Oh, so, by, so, trivia, so, uh, by the way. Uh yeah, oh yes, please. You know that the part with, with Ian Holm at the table, we severed head. It's all pasta mm, yes, and, yes. and caviar. That's all it's pasta. What? Pasta and caviar. That's that's all. That's all they they oh, use for shit, really for the wiring. Yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. And, and milk. Oh, and milk. Yeah. Oh, 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 yes, 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 yes. I was wondering that. Like, mm. like the, I was like, oh, that's their technology. It's so <laughs> organic. So that's pasta. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit! You know what's cool when they do that when they do the autopsy on the face hugger. I, I read up that those are oysters. Those are oysters. Liver. Yeah. Mukha, mukha oh wow. Naman, eh. yeah. Actually, yeah. I'm getting yeah. Because when it was a tight shot, but I was like thinking, who's the production designer? Because this is so. It looks so alien, talaga. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and and not in a fake. Uh, you know, it's not. It's not like they just uh, made it out of synthetic stuff. Like, it looked really organic. Mm. Mm. Yung right. pala oysters guy and everything mm. else. Yeah. Killing. Pretty pretty good. Cool. Um, okay, I think we're kind of wrapping up. Um, okay. Yeah. Maybe um, would you guys like to do a last word on on, sure. on Alien? Uh, let's, <laughs> let's start with uh, let's start. young people I'll start. watch. I'll start. I'll start. <laughs> I'll start. Okay. Um, super big fan of this franchise. Super big fan of this director. Um, I love Ridley Scott. Man, we should. Yeah. We actually should have talked about Ridley Scott a lot, but no. But that, yeah, there'll, there'll, there'll be time. <laughs> there, there will be a time yeah. when we when we do, and we'll we'll yeah. bring him up. Um, and uh, this is uh, it's a fantastic franchise. Uh, very way more uh, hits than there are misses. But for me, this is easily the biggest hit uh, in in the franchise. Um, um, though I mean that's debatable for for a lot of people. Um, it's a, just a question of preference, I guess. Mm. Um, I love yeah. this movie so much. I think this came out the same year as as the thing. Can you imagine oh. being being a horror fan and then I, you get to you get to watch the thing and I'm, Alien the same I'm year? Never, I've never, never seen it. I think it's 1982. Oh, is it? Oh, is it? Okay, okay. Yeah. My bad. My bad. It's alright. I just googled it now. Because I what, why I got confused for a second there is because I I find so many comparisons between the two. Okay. Um, the whole, I'll watch a thing. The whole topic of uh, isolation in uh, uh, you know a group isolated somewhere um, and there's something that turns you against each other. Yeah. Um a lot of these themes are so uh, similar, no. Uh I, I guess that's why I relate both of them. And mm-hmm. and the thing is one of my f- absolute fav- favorite movies. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, this is why I, why I love uh, classic. Yeah. yeah okay. absolutely. Cool. So that's me. Anyone else who's next? Um I actually enjoyed the movie, watching the movie the same way Jones the cat was watching the alien kill the guy. Were you, hiss- were you hissing? I love that close up on Jones, just like yeah. <laughs> watching with his eyes open. So that that is the amount of wonder and fear that I yeah. entered in watching this movie. Jones so cool. the cat. I'll go next so Arnold can our guest yes. who chose this movie can wrap it up. Absolutely. Uh, for me, this is a movie that's super enjoyable for me and Thinking uh, it actually has a lot of the stuff I love. It's sci-fi. 
And it's also Joss. I love Joss. So parang knowing that this was pitched as Joss but in space and then being able to see it, parang, oh my God, it is Joss in space. But I love that about it. Um, I, I also like the visuals a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, I do love that. Parang one of the, one of the, my favorite things about horror Wow, I can't believe I'm saying this. Is that wow. <laughs> in, a, in a horror it's film? It's working. It's working. In, in, in horror film, parang there's always in some in a lot of horror films, parang while in the process of being afraid and showing what is horrible or what is horrifying, parang it actually kind of asks the question: Who is actually the monster, or is what is actually uh, horror for us? And mm-hmm. parang I think a movie like Alien is one of those movies that like, oh my god, who is who really is the monster here? It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's like it's like in in monster movies a lot of a lot of time it's like the monster isn't the bad guy it's the yeah. humans it's the humans yeah. it's the yeah. humans which, it's which the humans. Fair, goes way back to man to Franken to doctor to Frankenstein but but galing pa rin yes. na mm-hmm. how we've carried that tradition forward mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sorry arnold how about arnold you? well for me it will always be special because like i said this is the movie that introduced yeah. me to the horror genre very for uh, nothing quite like the experience i had and uh, like I said, you know, watching it again as an adult, uh, it's like me trying to connect with my, my younger self. And uh, now I'm not as scared about it, you know, and uh, there's something very personal about it in the first side. So, yeah, it will always be special to me. And I highly recommend it. If you haven't seen Alien, watch it and watch Aliens right after because that, yeah. okay, I mean, the I'm themes down. are yeah. I'm down. watching I'm the text. <laughs> the themes I'm are down, the same. Yeah. Cool. Again, uh, Arnold, thank you. Oh, yeah. So many things. Uh, Thank you for coming on. Thank you for choosing this this uh, this film because it was excellent, and we got two new viewers, um, (laughs) and I think possibly two more uh, alien fans. Yeah. Yeah. In the building. We'll see. We'll see. Let's see. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So So, thank you. Awesome. awesome. Um, Is there anything you'd like to? To, to plug, tell us about yeah. tell us about what you have on on your plate. For oh yeah, um, foreseeable future. Yeah, I'm working on the volume two. Ah, uh, yeah, volume two of Children of Atali, a sequel to Mythology Class. So and um, yeah, uh, it's funny because uh, since we're talking about horror, uh, when I first made Mythology Class, the big, the big balance sequence was really you, you know you know because in Philippine mythology, but. The thing about is supposed to be scary, manangals, all of that. My take on that was try to strip away the horror aspect, you know, and try to make it, you know, more and more to humanize all of them. It's funny because we were talking about the aliens. Someone mentioned, I think it was Chris who mentioned that, that, that it's not really so much as the monsters, it's, the, it's human nature that's the enemy of the, yeah. <laughs> in the story. So, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm working on. And um, I'm also working on, uh, well, a secret project. I can't, Ooh, reveal it. Oh, <laughs> I can't say much, but I'm very excited about it. Um, maybe soon. I, I might, if they allow me. <laughs> we'll get an announcement soon. Yeah, yeah, but not. Maybe, not. maybe we'll get an announcement uh, when the time this episode comes out. Oh, <laughs> we'll, see. We'll, see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. But I'm very excited about it. That is awesome. Uh, I can't wait to, to find out what that is. Same. Um, oh, that was fun. This is fun, guys. This is so much me. fun. So fun. Thank you, Arnold. Yay. Oh, that was fun. Thanks so much. I, I hope you uh, come back again with another... Yeah. another oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, be, I'll be happy. I'll be happy. Yes, please. Awesome. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Brought to you by Big Baby Studios.